Expanded Access, Wikipedia Audio Expanded access refers to the use of an investigational new drug outside of a clinical trial by people with serious or life-threatening conditions who do not meet the enrollment criteria for the clinical trial in progress. Outside the United States, such access is allowed through named patient programs. In the U.S. this type of access may be available in accordance with United States Food and Drug Administration regulations, when it is determined that people may benefit from the treatment, the therapy can be given safely outside the clinical trial setting, no other alternative therapy is available, and the drug developer agrees to provide access to the drug. The FDA refers to such a program as an expanded access program. EAPs have many use cases, including HIV-AIDS, cancer, cardiovascular diseases, genetic disorders, and rare diseases, among others. There are several types of EAPs allowed in the United States. Treatment protocols and treatment ends provide large numbers of people access to investigational drugs. A single patient IND is a request from a physician to the FDA that an individual be allowed access to an investigational drug on an emergency or compassionate use basis. When the FDA receives a significant number of requests for individual expanded access to an investigational drug for the same use, they may ask the trial sponsor to consolidate these requests, creating an intermediate size group. Compassionate use is a more colloquial term that is not generally used by the FDA. Individuals and their physicians can apply for use of an investigational drug using FDA Form 3926, an application form created by the agency in June 2016. Since 1987, the FDA has had rules in place that have enabled people, under specific circumstances, to access drugs or biologics that are still in development for treatment purposes. These expanded access program rules were amended in 2009 by the FDA to ensure broad and equitable access to investigational drugs for treatment. FDA Regulations The regulations include the following. The regulations also include general criteria for granting expanded access. Criteria that must be met in order to authorize the expanded access use, requirements for expanded access submissions, safeguards to protect people in clinical trials and the clinical trial process itself. Despite the updated regulations, debate remains over key elements of expanded access. A number of challenges can exist when people seek access to investigational drugs. As of September 2016, 32 states have passed right-to-try laws that permit manufacturers to provide experimental medicines to terminally ill people without U.S. FDA authorization. Legal, medical, and bioethics scholars, including Jonathan Darrow and Arthur Kaplan, have argued that these state laws have little practical significance because people can already obtain pre-approval access through the FDA's expanded access program, and because the FDA is generally not the limiting factor in obtaining pre-approval access. Outside the U.S., programs that enable access to drugs in the pre-approval and pre-launch phase are referred to by a variety of names including named patient programs, named patient supply and temporary authorization for use. In the EU, named patient programs also allow people to access drugs in the time period between centralized European Medicines Agency approval and launch in their home countries which can range from one year to 18 months. The person must have a serious condition or disease for which there is no comparable alternative therapy available, the person must be unable to participate in a clinical trial, 
the potential benefit must outweigh the potential risk of using the treatment, there should be no impact on the completion of the clinical trial or the drug's approval. Deciding at what point in the clinical trial process access should be given. Some stakeholders support expanded access programs after Phase I testing in clinical trials. The FDA has stated that most drugs should not be eligible until some point during Phase III when efficacy data have been obtained, unless compelling Phase II data on safety and efficacy are available, weighing risks to the patient against the potential benefits. The FDA requires that a physician and an institutional review board determine that a treatment will not pose undue risk to the person, relative to the condition he or she is suffering from. However, the FDA maintains the right to overrule the physician and IRB, determining who should get access. The FDA states that expanded access should only be considered for patients with a serious disease or condition but the FDA's rules do not provide a definition of serious, instead it provides examples of diseases and conditions that fall into this category. In the case of a cancer drug, the sponsor of an expanded access program must define exactly which people will get access. Most often, access is limited to those people with the same type of cancer the drug is being tested for. State law Outside the United States Obtaining agreement from a drug manufacturer to provide the drug The drug manufacturing company must agree to provide the investigational drug for expanded access use. FDA cannot compel a company to provide a drug for compassionate use, and a company may decline a compassionate use request for a variety of reasons. If a company agrees to provide the drug, it will issue a letter of authorization, obtaining an IRB review. Finding time on an IRB schedule can be difficult, particularly for doctors who are not based at research centers where IRBs are readily available. The fee for the review may pose a problem as well. It may be unclear who is responsible for the cost of the IRB review which can be as much as $2,000. Many IRBs conduct reviews pro bono but others that charge will often only waive their fees for research done in their hospital, protecting physicians against liability risk. Currently, physicians may be concerned that they could face a liability risk for investigational drugs that they recommend to their patients or help them gain access to potentially discouraging them from doing so. The FDA does not have jurisdiction over this issue but there is a bill in Congress, the Compassionate Access Act of 2010, that would address the situation, paying for the drug. While the FDA allows drug companies to recover the costs of providing a treatment through an EAP, Many companies may hesitate to do so because it requires disclosing the cost of their drug, which is often a closely guarded secret. In addition, many insurance companies won't cover the costs of experimental treatment so access could be limited to people with the means to pay for it, assessing the potential impact of adverse events on drug development. Adverse events that result from expanded access programs must be reported to the FDA in the same way ease are reported in the case of a clinical trial. The FDA states that, to their knowledge, no drug candidate has been turned down for approval because of an adverse event that appeared in an expanded access program.